Residential schools existed in Canada starting in the early 1800s and they were operated by the Canadian government in partnership with church organizations across the country. So the Shingwak Residential School here was run by the Anglican Church of Canada, but there were residential schools that were operated by the Catholic Church as well as the Presbyterian, United, Methodist, pretty much any church organization you can imagine operated a residential school somewhere in this country. The Shingwak Residential School Center offers historical site tours relating to the history of residential schools in Sault Ste. Marie. Um, so this is typically a walking tour combined with a discussion and some educational programming to teach people about the history of the site that Algoma University is located on and the history that Sault Ste. Marie has yeah. to the Indigenous communities surrounding it and residential schools across Canada. It is somewhat unusual that this residential school is named after an Indigenous chief. So Chief Shingwak was the chief in Garden River First Nation and he had a vision of what was called teaching wigwams. Part of the walking tour, we talk about Shingwak Hall, which is the main administrative building of Algoma University today. And it was previously the residential school building on this site. We also visit some of the monuments that are on site that are documenting the early years of the residential school. Uh, we also go into the Bishop Fouquet Memorial Chapel, which was built in 1883 as part of the very early years of the Shingwak Residential School. We also visit the cemetery on site and talk about just generally the layout of the 100 acres that initially made up the Shingwak site here. It's very important for um, Canada's 150 celebrations to really not just be a celebration, but really to be a time of refre reflection on uh, on what this country means and what does it mean that we are a state on land that wasn't originally ours? Um, what does that mean in dealing with Indigenous communities? Um, should we be making laws for them? Should we not be? Um, should they be existing as their own separate state? I think that 150 for us we have to look at the entire picture. We can't just pick and choose the happy memories or romanticize colonialism or our founding fathers because we have to take them as whole people. We have to take the picture as a whole picture and we have to look at both sides of that story. So I think that it's imperative that we combine the real history and both sides of the story in our 150 celebrations. It's really important that the Sault Ste. Marie community as well as Canadians more broadly learn about residential school history, especially since recently there's really been a push to talk about reconciliation at a national level and build those relationships with Indigenous communities. So I think it's an individual responsibility, a community responsibility for us to really learn that history and become educated ourselves so we can teach our children about it. And so I think uh, being involved in that program is really meaningful on a personal level and I'm constantly learning about the Indigenous communities that are around us and feel really grateful to be able to be in this role and being able to work with the communities that are connected to Algoma. So this is the Bishop Fouquet Memorial Chapel. Um, it's named after the first Anglican bishop of the Algoma region. So Algoma University is the only university in Canada that's located in a former residential school building. So there was over 130 residential schools across the country, but many of those buildings aren't intact or they're privately owned. Um, so it's pretty unique that this is a residential school building that is still used today and it's still used for education, though definitely a more culturally sensitive, cross-cultural based education. And Algoma University has worked really hard to preserve that history, which is pretty unique. The opportunity that the Sioux has being surrounded by so many wonderful and diverse First Nation communities, really the opportunity to work with those communities and create those cross-cultural conversations, um, that's something that I found extremely unique about Sioux St. Marie coming from Southern Ontario. Because in Southern Ontario, I always felt very removed from Indigenous culture and I always felt like I couldn't see it around me every day. When the building first opened, it didn't have electricity. It actually still doesn't have running water. The space is very much like it was during the residential school era. The 
newer flooring on this section was actually put in in the 60s when this was still operating as a residential school. The reason we really thought it was important to include this historical tour as part of the university's Canada 150 programming has to do with the fact that the larger kind of historical narrative around Canada 150 isn't really talking about some of the colonial history in Canada. It's often not talking about indigenous realities in Canada. And this land really has a forever history that belongs to the Anishinaabe people um, that have been in this territory for years. Mm -hmm. And so this tour is a way to talk about that history okay, so and talk about larger historical narratives outside. that are connected to Canadian history, but aren't being kind of broadcast on that mainstream media platform. So if you're interested in doing a tour, you're welcome to just contact the center. And we do offer tours on basically on demand. We just require two weeks notice in order to facilitate the group size.